Welcome Flip Clock fans. We're looking at a GE74305. One of the variants of that. We'll talk about that in a second. But we've got a clock here that is not functioning. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this one. Now this of course is not a flip clock. A lot of people will call it a rolling wheel clock. But that's not exactly right either. So if you look at this, say hey there's some flipping going on in there after all. You see the minutes there. The tile will flip over there before it's presented. There's two numbers on each tile there for the minutes. Now the middle digit here, the tens, it's it's just a regular wheel, but the hours has two digits on, on each tile there as well, and it flips the same way. It's the GE Chronotel mechanism, and you can find that in many of their clocks. This is a very common clock you'll see on eBay. So it displays well. I think that's why they were marking those clocks. But of course, we like the flip clocks as well. This is the uh, A variant. It came out in 78. You can see that from the date code. The B also, the Chronotel came out in 79. And around 81, you had the 74305C. And we were all like this, the Chronotel. Here's an ad from 1978. You can see that you can move this mechanism forward and backwards. And I'm like a flip clock. And around 82, 83 was the last time I could see it in advertising in the newspaper. So it ran from 78 to 82. And you want to look here, what's uh, distinctive here is this is straight up uh, household current. So if you're working on this with it plugged in, which is not advisable, it can get you. Now that's the motor there, and it uses a sealed can inside of a rotating magnetic field situation. The problem, if you look here, kind of in the center there to the left, you'll see that the motor is actually working. And on closer inspection, you can see that it is not turning this wheel that it should be turning. So I'm going to help it out along here. Once I do that, it grabs a hold of the teeth. So it's pretty clear we have a stripped out gear there. See, that's pretty gunked up. They use some sort of lubricant there. We're going to replace that. Oh, here goes the mechanism. I just really think that's cool. We're going to replace that with lithium grease, most likely, once we get into that. Now, to do that, we're going to have to remove this mechanism and remove this part here to get to that gear. I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, we've already got this clock dis disassembled, and this was the faceplate, and it pulls straight off. Not, not very difficult there. And we've already removed screws from the bottom, about five of these screws. Now the mechanism, you'll see it's got a hex head screw there. And it's about, it's right around five millimeters. I'd have suspected that it would have been exactly four or five millimeters, but it's not. So you can use something like that, but that's a little loose. So I've chosen to use a 3 16 which is close to five millimeters, but it's actually just a little bit smaller, so this actually fits better. So we'll take the, there's two of those screws to get the mechanism out, because we will have to get the mechanism out to get to all that. Now, to get to the mechanism, you're going to want to remove the front part here, where the tuner is, and that. So you've got three screws to remove there. There's one there, there's one right in the middle there. And then off to the side here where the circuit board is, you'll find another screw. Now you see this has got the string tuner, the old school string tuner. You really don't want to mess with that, trust me. So if you take all these off together, you don't even have to concern yourself with that. So once I remove that, it allows me to get that to work out this mechanism. And it is in there tight, and you're, you're running the risk of, like, snapping a wire off in the back there. So you want to take pictures as you do this. Speaking of that, I'm, 
as I'm working with this, I'm having trouble because the top lid here wants to get in my way. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this speaker. Let me find that this speaker is in really good shape. It's not even dirty, which is pretty amazing. So that's going to allow me to clean the top cabinet there. We want to take a good look at what you got before I take that plate off. You can see there's like a rocker arm there. There's a spring there, and it's just kind of leaning up against the post. It's not against anything in particular. So you take some pictures, you get a sense of what's going on, because once you take this plate off, unless you have another clock laying around to compare it to, or someone's made a video about it, you're in trouble. Those flathead screws, for some reason, and they're longish. I like this clock because the screws are distinctive. They're, you're not going to have multiple lengths. The bottom has one length, this has another. Now those screws go into that, that front protective plate in front of the time there. So it kind of does double duty. I'm going to kind of try to hold as I pull this loose. We don't want things flying out of here. And that's pretty simple. I've got that spring there. I'll release that. And things just kind of start to fall. There's the rocker arm. We'll talk about what that might do. And this wheel here just kind of lays there. It's not really stuck there. Now you see that right in the center there's a black gear. That turns the time. And that rocker arm helps the digits land in the right spot. That's all it does. It helps them line up correctly. This just lifts off easily. I'm just going slow because I don't want to... I don't want to jam this time up here. I'm not sure if I'll knock it off of the alarm, get that out of alignment, so I'm just being careful. There's our gear we need. So I don't see anything holding that down. You just kind of pull that right off. And immediately I can see where somebody's gone in there and took a bite out of that. You see, that's just about the size of that gear coming off the motor. So you've got brass versus plastic often a problem in these clocks. Now I've got a parts clock and I've pulled the gear off that we need, which is fortunate. Not everybody's going to have that. It's pretty dirty. We're going to use that lithium grease on that. Now I'm looking at that thinking, well, is it, is it brittle? And it's not at all. So what I think's happened is someone was trying to adjust the clock right in the middle of when it was trying to change time. That's, and it possibly got jammed up. So you just use some lithium grease on all this. Keep things limbered up and running smooth. I don't want to overdo the grease, but I'm, I'm applying it pretty moderately. So we're going to reassemble in reverse. Again, trying not to knock things out of alignment. And there's our larger wheel. It has an extension that it contacts that black gear in the middle once a minute. Now, there's that extension, you can see that. That's the gear that's gonna contact the gear we just put in. Thankfully, that's not messed up because that's kind of riveted into that plate. So we place things in there, and again, it doesn't snap into place, it just kind of lays in there. There's our rocker arm. So that rocker arm's gonna drop down and hold that gear into place when the numbers change, just so it kind of snaps to a little bit. That's really all it does. It's easily moved out of the way whether you're turning forward or backward. And it just kind of helps the digits, the minute digits line up. And like I said, there's no, there's no place for that spring there to, to rest on except that post. Got our gear lubed up there on that plate. So we get everything lined up. Pretty straightforward. Now that spring snapped in between the post and that plate, so I just got to move that spring out of the way. Easy enough. And the screws go back into place. And like I said earlier, this long screw actually holds that face plate in, in place. That face plate has the light. Kind of diffuses, it kind of diffuses the, the neon glow bulb light onto the numbers. And double checking to make sure things are flipping forward and back like they're supposed to. It does quite well. Now what I'm going to do here is you see right in the center there you'll see the, the alarm set. I've got it set to 5. And I want to double check to make sure that still works. Now you'll see off to that 5 you'll see a, a gear like. That should move to the left 
once it clicks over that'll that'll signify that there just like it did that it set the alarm well we've reassembled cleaned the clock up and we've got everything back in working order I was glad to get this done I did this for somebody because it was had some sentimental meaning to them and I was glad to get it back on the road well thanks for taking the time